Hi, hi, beautiful filmmakers. How are you today? It's Monday. I don't know if you saw me earlier. I was out walking my child and I came on to let you know that I'd be here today. Um, it is a gorgeous day in Denver and it's so appreciated. I hope it's beautiful where you are. Hi, um, because this has been, the winter wasn't, I mean, the winter was pretty long and bad, but the spring was also, it's been cold and sort of like, you know, we had a lot of snow in the springtime and we are over it here in Denver. We're ready for this warm weather. So I'm really grateful for today. So today you might've seen me come on earlier to say what the topic is going to be for this filmmaker to filmmaker session. And what I want to talk about is Sundance. Um, and I have been lucky enough, hey, hi. I have been lucky enough to be both at the Sundance Film Festival with a movie. I premiered my first movie there. And I also later um, went to Sundance Screenwriters Lab. And so I've been very lucky to have been, you know, very much part of the Sundance uh, story for myself. And it's an amazing thing. Hi, hi Robert, nice to see you. Hi Maggie. I see so many friends. <laughs> um, so about Sundance. So last week I got two emails to me saying, can you give me advice about Sundance? And they were specifically from people who were applying to the Screenwriters Lab. And <clears throat> this is something I'm asked about a lot. And I thought it's really worth like, you know, talking about this and giving you my honest opinion about how you can increase your chances of getting into either the film festival or the lab. And we will talk about both in this. So for those of you who don't know, Sundance has like two arms. There's the Sundance Film Festival. Hi, Kevin. And then there's the Sundance Labs. And those are run by what is called the Sundance Institute. Okay, and they're two separate entities, right? If you get your movie in the lab, it does not mean that you definitely get a slot at the festival. A lot of lab films do end up in the festival, but it's not a guarantee at all. Many lab films don't make it into the festival too. On the flip side, you know, um, you know, you can get into the festival and then you will be on the radar of the Sundance Institute, obviously, and you're, you know, that will help you get into the lab potentially. Okay. But they are two separate entities. They're run by different people. They do obviously communicate with each other. They do obviously have similar sort of goals and aims. And I think also preferences in, in movies and the kinds of movies that they like. Hey, Kevin, I see you. Um, but they are different things, right? So most people sort of think of like the lab as being a stepping stone to getting a movie in a festival, right? Like they see the labs and they're like, oh, if I could get my movie into the Sundance Labs and I could get it in the festival, it'd be amazing, you know? And I think very famously, there's been some amazing directors like Tarantino and Paul Thomas Anderson who have come through the labs and then premiered movies at the festival and that's launched their careers and it's kind of become like, you know, a bit of an indie thing to, you know, indie film scene thing to like aspire to getting into the lab so that you can do that and then go to the festival. For my own self, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my own experience and how I got in, you know, to both of them. And then I will talk just about some general advice for anyone who's wanting to get into either the lab or the festival. <clears throat> I first learned about, I knew about the festival probably from the 90s. You know, um, I think then it started to get like a really big, um, prominent uh, place in our psyche again, if you're a film fan. And, but I didn't really have any aspirations to have a film there. I mean, that was so beyond me. That's like, if you're sort of like, you're really poor and you're thinking, God, if I could just get a house for a million dollars, that would be freaking like, you know, that'd be like winning the lottery, but you could never imagine buying a house for $50 million. You know what I mean? So I never imagined having a film at the festival at that point. What I did though was in 2003, I read about the Sundance Labs and I was immediately like, boom, I have to go to the lab, <laughs> right? You know, I don't know if you ever get that about anything. Like I really felt a calling to it. It was like, I, I mean, it just seemed like my idea of heaven, like this idea that you got, you know, all your expenses paid, you got taken to this place in the mountains, this beautiful resort that just, the pictures online looked amazing, you know, and you get immersed in this sort of world of indie filmmaking and you get these amazing mentors and all this. And I just thought, I cannot imagine anything better in the whole world than going to that lab and I want to go to that. And so I started to make it my goal. <clears throat> I finished my first screenplay a couple of years later, I submitted it to the lab, I didn't get anywhere. Um, I don't even remember like necessarily even getting rejection letters. I don't know, maybe I did, but you know, I just didn't get anywhere. Uh, I, that didn't stop me. And I'm, this is going to be a common refrain through this conversation. It did not stop me because that script didn't get selected for the Sundown Screenwriters Lab, but it did get optioned. It got sold 
and it sort of launched my career. And so I came to LA as a result of that script. And I started working as a screenwriter and I got hired to write other screenplays and I was working in this way. So I wrote another screenplay that I thought would be good for the labs and I submitted it and I got turned down again. So I was like, okay, that's fine, you know? And, you know, but I kept working, right? I kept just working on my screenplays. Then I wrote another screenplay. So I submitted three different screenplays. And then the fourth screenplay I submitted, I was like, this is the one, right? And it was for a movie called Obsolidia. And again, I got rejected. It didn't get anywhere in it. And um, at that point, I was like, okay, I'm just going to make this movie. So I made the film. You know, and again, this is, you know, so I've been rejected at the, by this point four times from the labs and um, with four different scripts. And at this point, I just like, I made my movie by myself, you know? And I made that film, I submitted it to the festival, to Sundance Festival, and it got accepted, all right? So the feature film got accepted. So I went to the um, Sundance um, Film Festival, amazing experience. And during that, actually, Michelle Satter, who is the head of the Sundance Institute, she reached out and said, could we meet for a coffee? I met her for a coffee. I told her in no uncertain terms, like it has been my dream to go to the lab. You know, I, I like there's nothing that I would like more. And she said, great, we'll submit a script. So after the festival, I was like, I gotta write a script for this and submit it. So the screenwriter, they run two screenwriter labs a year, one in June, which comes immediately before the director's lab, and then one in January. So they had a very short window. This was in January, just after the festival. Um, and I said, okay, I'm gonna submit something to you, aiming to get into the June lab. So I submitted it to her. And I, you know, now I had a direct contact with the head of the lab, which was amazing. So I submitted it directly to her. And um, I wrote this screenplay, which I just really loved and which I really wanted to make, which was kind of a weird concept. It was about a woman who dies and it's about the afterlife. You know, it was one of those kind of movies, right? And it was all about her sort of finding the meaning of her life through her death, you know, blah, 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 right? But it was also about the fact that somebody else, like she's like mixed up at death with somebody else, all those kind of stuff. Um, hey, thank you. Um, so, so I submitted that to her and I thought this has got to get in because they, they, they know me, they like me, I've had a movie at the festival and lo and behold, my movie, did, my script did not get selected. I got rejected again. I got rejected from the Sundance Labs again. And I was gutted because I really thought that I would get in. I mean, I just thought it was like, I thought I was a shoe in at this point, right? I mean, I've just had a movie in the festival. It's won two awards, a feature film. I thought like for sure, they're just gonna like usher me in and I'm gonna be in the June Lab. I didn't get it. She said to me, um, they just, she, you know, they didn't really respond to the script. They didn't love it. I was like, holy shit. Now here I'm gonna tell you something which I have never told anybody, okay? And um, this is will lead into some of the advice that I'm gonna give you about, you know, if you want to get into the Screenwriters Lab, what you should do. So I then decided to get smart because I was like, okay, I'm gonna resubmit for the January Lab, right? I need to write another script <laughs> and I need to get smart about this because obviously that, like this script, they just did not chive with them and I want to go to the lab. So I looked at what had been accepted, right? And I looked at what kind of film was being accepted. And I looked at what had been accepted for that round and the round before and the round before that. And I just read all the log lines and read about those projects, right? And I <clears throat> saw a pattern, for instance, that there was a lot of films that are about uh, very personal sort of things, right? And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna write something that's kind of like my story about like someone like me, um, I'm Scottish originally, like a woman who's living in America, an immigrant who goes back to Scotland after something happens, because I just sort of thought, you know, I like rather cynically, I felt like this kind of story is gonna chime with them, okay? And I've never admitted this anywhere because, you know, my whole thing always, if you know me at all, I'm always like, write what you love, write what you love, you know, don't think about the audience. I totally thought about the audience. And the audience for me at that point was, the Sundance Screenwriters Lab, I wanted to get in, right? And so I wrote that script, and as I say, I studied what they had been accepting, and I you know, thought, okay, this feels like the kind of thing. I also became aware, so my movie Obsolidia won an award at Sundance called the Alfred P. Sloan Award. And Alfred P. Sloan is an institution that gives 
um, uh, support and money to projects that have a science theme or about science or a scientist, etc. It's not science fiction. It's about real life science. Okay. But it's a pretty broad stretch, pretty broad definition that they have. And I realized that the Sundance Screenwriters Lab in January, they also had a spot sponsored by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. So not only did I decide to do this personal take, but I also decided to make my movie about a scientist, okay? Now that sounds like super cynical, but I just thought this will give me the best shot of getting in. And you know what? I was right. Because not only did I get into the lab, I also got the Alfred P. Sloan Fellowship, which is um, a $20,000 grant basically, which is amazing. So you're not only like, you know, getting in, but you're actually getting money for going, you know, and to, to write for a number of months. Okay. So that was amazing. So I did actually take this, the cynical, um, sort of path to it and I got into the lab and was it worth it? You might ask, you know, <laughs> like eight years of work. Um, hell yeah, it was awesome. I just like, honestly, I would say besides from making my own films, Without a doubt, I think it was one of the most rich, amazing, creative experiences of my life. It fulfilled my expectations and more. I absolutely freaking loved it. So, um, you know, it, it was well worth it. So let's talk about now some tips if you are wanting to get into Sundance the Film Festival or Sundance Labs. And I'm going to talk about the labs first and I'm going to talk specifically about the Screenwriters Lab. The Directors Lab mostly is people who've gone through the Screenwriters Lab. Okay, so I'm just gonna let you know about that. I didn't, I've never been to the director's lab. I wasn't qualified to go when I, when, so when I got chosen to go to screenwriter's lab, I had already made a feature film. And so the director's lab is strictly for first time filmmakers. So I didn't uh, ever get the chance to do that. That would have been like my beyond fantasy. So um, <clears throat> the lab, let's talk about the screenwriter's lab and how to get in. The first thing I'm gonna say is Sundance, when they choose you to go in the lab, they're going to support you and your project for at least a year and probably more than that. Okay. They really put a lot of weight behind you and they will help you a lot. Right. And so obviously what they want to do is they want to choose people who they feel are serious and committed in themselves. And how do they know you're serious and committed? It's because you have some work that you can show them already existing in the world. Okay. And it's kind of like, you know, I guess for me, when I first started submitting to the screenwriters lab, like I didn't really think about that. I just sort of thought it's about the script. It's not just about the script. It's about you. Who are you? Right. And so for me, I'd be like, this script is so great. And surely, even though I've never made a film, even though I've never made a short, I've never made anything, I've never done anything, you know, this will stand out. And that's just not how it works. Like if you look at the bios of the people who are selected every year, and I really encourage you to do it. If you're serious about getting selected, look at them, right? read them. What are these people doing? Right? They don't choose people for the lab who have never made a film, never written anything, never done anything. Right now you can still submit, you know, you can still have the fan, you know, you can still have the fancy and it's still good to submit. I think it's just good to like do these things, to have those deadlines and these goals and take action towards them. I think it's important, but I am going to say, if you're serious about getting into the screenwriters lab, you know, you need to be doing work continue to do work, whether or not you're getting into the lab, doesn't matter, you know, find a way to get shorts made, etc. Now, something I'm going to say too, <clears throat> I found it very strange. So when I went to the screenwriters lab, there was 12 projects um, that had been selected for it. And I was kind of shocked that like, I think every single one of them, a couple of them were writing pairs. Okay. So some films have like two people attached and two people there, but everybody there was not one single just screenwriter everybody was a writer slash director and if they weren't a writer slash director they were a writer there with someone who was going to direct the movie okay now i don't know if this is true every single year and again this goes into the thing of doing your research and looking at what they're you know like look at last year look at the year before who is getting in and have those people direct to things but the year I was there, just to be clear, there was not a single person who would, had just written a screenplay and had no one attached, not one. Okay. Everybody was going to direct their own movie or they were there as a partner with somebody who was going to direct it. Okay. So I would say that if you are a screenwriter straight up and you have no interest in directing and you really want to go to the Sundance screenwriters lab, my advice to you would be to like look for a director to hook up with, to pair up with, not hook up in the romantic sense, obviously, but to partner up with 
you know, who would be your writing partner stroke will be the director of the film and look for somebody who has like got some level of um, achievement behind them. Okay. That they're not completely, completely new to it. Okay. And again, like when I look at all the people who were there with me, um, most of them, I would say probably at least half had done shorts of note. They had made short films, they'd written and directed short films that were notable, you know, and that had stood out in some way. Um, a couple of them came from like documentary world and I think that's the case every year. They had already directed documentary features that had stood out. And then there was, there was me, I had directed a feature, I'd written and directed a feature that had been in Sundance. You know, so people like, there's not a single person there that hasn't done anything, you know? That's just the way it is, right? And if you think of it from their perspective, they're investing a lot of money in you, right? You don't have to pay to be obviously part of the program. They're gonna invest a lot of money. They're gonna put a lot behind you. They want people who already are showing that they have that promise and they want people who are showing that they are committed and that they're putting themselves out there, right? And it kind of makes sense if you think about it from their perspective. So if you're a screenwriter and you've never had anything produced, and you, you know, like you're just like how I was when I first started submitting, right? Like you're just, you know, writing your screenplays and hoping um, to get them made and you see Sundance. I mean, I, I say do submit, but also think about making a, you know, making a short yourself. I would definitely recommend that and make a good one. And then also think about actually getting involved with, if you're not wanting to direct at all yourself, then I would suggest getting involved with a director who, as I say, is someone who's maybe a little up and coming. Maybe they've done a short already that really stood out, you know, or they've done a feature or whatever, but they've got something. Now, the next thing to talk about is just sort of subject matter. And as I said, and as I've revealed, and I've never told anyone that, like I got a little strategic about it at a certain point because I was like, I am getting into the lab, you know, God damn it, right? <laughs> so, I'm, you know, I will be like, um, obviously, if you look at the Sundance like slate in the labs, right? Every year they're going to have one Native American film. They're probably going to have, you know, at least one LGBTQ. They're going to have at least one, you know, like a person of color. They're going to be looking for a spread, right? And it, that's part of what, who they are and part of their mission, you know? And so there's certain kinds of films that are never going to make it in there. You know, so just like if it's not that kind of movie, even if your like, goal is to get in screenwriter's lab, like if you've written something that doesn't fit into that, you know, like think about what they are looking for just a little bit and see if you can create something in that mold, right? And definitely personal, they like personal films. You know, they like things that feel, you know, um, that are coming from your authentic heart, right? That aren't cynical or, or outside of yourself. And just to think about this though, and it's, it's funny because I'm saying, oh, cynical, and at the same time I'm telling you to like write according to certain kinds of parameters, but, um, you know, it is worth considering the Alfred P. Sloan. Uh, every year they do have a slot that is for a movie that is based on a scientific theme or about a scientist. You know, check it out, do your research. Is there a way you can bring that into your film? To be clear, the script that I went to the lab with, um, it was called STEM. It's about a woman who's a stem cell researcher, okay? And so my thing with that was like, you know, it, it, like initially there was no science in the movie, I'll be honest. And then I had the idea that maybe I could get the Alpha P. Sloan Fellowship. And I thought, okay, well, how, you know, what would it be like if she was a scientist? And actually it really like enhanced the script and it made it better and it made it more interesting. So, you know, it's just something to think about, right? <laughs> you know, it can help, you know? And if you're just, as I say, if you're like me and you're just like, I just want into the screenwriter's lab, this is what I'm helping you do, right? And I'm just going, Think about all the different sort of angles and how you can position your film to make it like, you know, um, pop into one of the fields that they're going to be looking for. And as I say, they're always going to be interested in things about climate change. They're always going to be interested in things about, you know, social issues, right? So, you know, like if you've got that, like even if your movie is a little bit like that, can you just like make it more like that, your script? And that's probably going to help. Now, the next thing to talk about in applying for the um, lab's recommendations, you know, now every year I get an email from Elise who works with the lab and she asks me for recommendations. You know, she's like, do you, have you read any scripts? Do you know if anyone we should know about, blah, blah, blah. Everybody who's part of Sundance 
you know, we'll get that same email and people can recommend you. Now, please do not flood me with um, requests for recommendations. I'm just going to say, if you know someone legitimately who has been to Sundance, I didn't, I didn't get recommendations for any of my projects. I, I submitted my film through the slush pile. I never tried to get a recommendation for it. Um, I didn't know anyone, so, <laughs> so I couldn't get a recommendation. But if you do know somebody, you know, you can definitely ask them, would you be willing to consider recommending me um, to the Sundance Institute? Um, if you do that, and I'm just going to say a little bit of a little word of advice on asking someone to recommend you, because I get a lot of people asking me to do that. First of all, if I don't know you at all and I don't know your work at all, I am not going to recommend you. OK, <laughs> like period. You know, I like, I'm going to recommend someone because I actually do believe they're a good fit for you, for Sundance. Do you know what I mean? Like if I'm going to recommend someone Sundance and say, hey, you should check, check out this person. I need to like, I need to know you. Like I can't just recommend you. Right. So please, you know, if you're asking someone to recommend you, you know, like, first of all, don't just ask anyone like, OK, so you happen to know someone that went to Sundance, but you know, I like, I feel very wary about just like reaching out to them just because of that. Right. Like I would be much more, okay, are, do they have sort of some symbiosis with your work? Is there some reason that they would particularly recommend you? You know, is there some connection, right? And then I would go, like, if you're, ask, you're gonna ask someone to recommend you, like, make sure you offer to share your work with them because no one wants to recommend somebody. I'm not gonna, as I say, I'm not gonna recommend someone if I don't know, like, what their work is or if it's of value, you know, and I don't know them as well, like, because it's personal, you know? So, um, you know, but there's no doubt that getting a recommendation, particularly for the labs, I think can be very important. I think for the festival, less important. You know, the festival is a different kettle of fish and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But the lab, I feel like if you can get someone who's been there or who knows like the system, if you can get recommendation from somebody within that, it can be helpful because I think it's just like, it just brings, you know, attention to that person and project, you know, and otherwise obviously they get so many submissions. Um, it could get lost in the shuffle. All right. And that's what happened to my films, my screenplays. I think before I, you know, the, all the screenplays that I ever submitted never got anywhere with. Um, I'm sure they just got lost in the shuffle. So, so I hope that helps with the lab. Now let's talk a little bit about the festival and how you like increase your chances of getting into the Sundance Film Festival. Um, and if you have any questions as we're doing this about the lab as well, please go ahead and ask. I say, I'm, you know, this, I'm just talking all from experience. This is all just like my experience, um, going there and what I have seen. Okay. So the festival, as we know, is like almost impossible to get into, right? <laughs> it's just, it's like the, the statistics every year, you know, just like sort of blow your mind. I think the year that I was there, it was like, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, 1.6% of films, submitted films got selected. It's, you know, it's like they say, it's easier to get into Harvard than it is to get your film into Sundance, right? So this is the first thing you have to know about the festival. Like to think that there is a way to get into it um, is just kind of crazy because, you know, uh, you have no control over it, right? And it's very unlikely statistically that your movie will get selected for it. Having said that, I have like one overriding massive giant tip for getting your movie into the festival. And it's this, make a movie you freaking love. And I mean it, right? Like people can get very like trying to be smart about it. And it's like, oh, well, if we cast this actor, like they know somebody. And, you know, if we get that band, like, you know, they're so hip and this and that. And if we get this person involved, well, they had a film at Sundance last year. You know, and I'm just like, no, 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 no. These programmers watch so many movies. They know all those tricks. They see all that shit up front. And to be honest, like they're just looking for movies that excite them. And you will never know what that is. You will never know what they're looking for. And every year it's something different. The year that my movie got selected for the Sundance Film Festival, I was just freaking lucky. And the reason I was lucky was it was the year that um, Joan Cooper took over as the head of the festival. So the theme for the Sundance Film Festival that year, nobody knew this, like when you were submitting, you didn't know this. But the theme that they had decided upon was to rebel, right? And it was all about, we're going back to our roots with real indie films, you know? And so I just got freaking lucky that the year I submitted my little $140,000 movie with no stars in it, that was their theme, right? And so, you know, if it was another year where it was business as usual and there's, you know, they're putting all the films with all the big stars and all that stuff, I wouldn't have got a look in. I got lucky, right? 
But I will say this, and you know, what I when I got into the film festival, I remember speaking to one of the programmers. At the um, they have like a a, a gathering of directors um, in LA a month before the festival or something, and I remember going there and I was talking to one of the programmers and he said, "Oh, you made Obsolidia," and he said, "I just love that movie so much." And he said, "You know," he said, "I watched so many movies and you can feel like they're just." doing things in order to create a certain effect. And he said, and your film just felt like pure love, you know? And it really sort of stuck with me. And it's funny because like when he said that to me, immediately I went, yeah, you're right. It, it is pure love. I mean, that film was pure love, right? It was made without any expectations and without any sort of thought that it would be, that it would actually get into Sundance, you know? Um, and so it was just like a labor of love making the movie and everything about that movie was love. And that's what came through. And I just sort of go like, you know, if you make your movie from that place and from that energy, first of all, you cannot go wrong because you will make something that you love and that's like the best thing on earth. But second, it really does have the best chance of actually standing out, you know, because so many of the films aren't made that way. So many films are made like in a much more cynical way. And, you know, these programmers are watching a lot of movies. They see a lot of stuff they've, you know, they see it all. And so I think like if you can make a film that's like so unique, so singular, so your passion, your vision, all that, I go, that is your number one best way to try to get in Sundance, you know, rather than, oh, we'll cast such and such or so and so, you know, unless you have, I don't know, I'm going to go like, who's the, who's the biggest like Sundance darling of recent years? There's probably a few. And obviously there is a thing like, you know, you can imagine, I think the whole indie film world are trying to get their movies in every year. You know, the studios are putting pressure on them. The sort of the mini studios are putting pressure on them. Everyone wants their movie there, you know? So I just go, look, if you're an indie filmmaker working like really like we're the off, off, off Broadway version of indie films, that's how I feel, you know, then I'm just like, you know, you just stand out by just doing your thing, you know? And if it doesn't work out, it's okay too. Because what I will just wrap this up with is this thought. Sundance is just one path. I have been very blessed to have been in the festival in the lab and I like both have been phenomenal experiences in so many ways, but there's tons of hugely successful filmmakers who have never been to the Sundance lab, who have never been to the Sundance Film Festival and they are, you know, making fantastic movies and having awesome careers and all that stuff. So it's not the be all and end all. It's not the only path. It's not the only way to have a career in movies. But if you feel the calling as I did, you know, you owe it to yourself to pursue it. And as I say, like for me, definitely pursuing it was worth it. It took me, um, I guess it was like seven years from when I wanted to get into the lab to when I actually got in the festival, which was kind of funny and eight years from when I wanted to get in the lab to getting in the lab, it took me eight years. So, you know, that's, that's like, that's how long it can take, you know? But, and I, you know, I said recently on the, um, on Instagram, like these big goals that we have, they sometimes take time, you know? So if you're feeling despondent because you're not where you want to be, don't worry about it. Just keep going because there's only one way you'll get where you want to go. And that's by keeping on. All right, you guys, I hope this is helps and this has shed some light and for the filmmakers that wrote to me about, you know, advice for their submissions. I just go, you know, um, when it comes to the Screenwriters Lab, I would, I would advise being strategic at certain points, you know? Um, yay, someone's saying I'm gonna keep going. Yes, keep going. You know, as I say, it took me years. It took me years and it took me a lot of rejections before I did get in there but it was worth it in the end and it's still worth it. Yes, um, reminder not to give up on the strategy. Absolutely, and I think as I say, with screen, when it comes to Screenwriters Lab, have a strategy. Look at who's getting in, look at what they've done, look at their bios as well as what their projects are, you know? And imagine how your film, like what you could write that would fit that kind of bill and also how you can build the kind of resume that will appeal to them, right? Because I guarantee if you do those things, like if you create films that are standing out, like short films, you know, you make one good short film, you're gonna be on their radar, you know? So like, I just go be tactical. Like it's a big, it's a big move to get into the lab, you know? So be tactical about how you get there and you will get there.
because I do. So it's possible. All right, guys. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining me if you're here live. And then also if you are watching this uh, later on the day or on YouTube, because I put these on YouTube, enjoy it there. And if you haven't seen it, it, I do put these up on YouTube. I use the hashtag filmmaker to filmmaker. There's a whole bunch now. There's a whole library of sessions like this um, full of advice and help. So I feel like slowly but surely I'm just going to have like one thing for absolutely every issue that comes up. Uh, for filmmakers so check it out you know go on YouTube and look me up and um, you'll see all these different uh, interviews also you guys if you are writing a screenplay I have to say this like get into my screenwriting course <laughs> I'm just like it's just amazing right now we've got a number of students who are like at different stages through it because it's just a rolling entry. I am thinking about, I don't know, it's, it's some, part of me is like, oh, should we just keep it open all the time or should I close it? I don't know. But um, it's just a great course. There's one woman in there right now who, and you know, this is like the funny thing, like how our careers work and how our flow goes. She, I met her at Sundance. She had a movie at Sundance. She's a writer and director. She's very accomplished. And she's doing my course right now because she's like, I just want that sort of like guidance. And she's like, oh my God, I freaking love this. It's making it so simple and it's making it so fun, right? And she goes, it's, it's never been this fun to write a screenplay, you know? So if you are like, whether you have never written a screenplay or you've written a lot, you should really check it out. Um, there is a link to it in my profile and I'm telling you it's great fun. Um, it's an eight week course and I always go like, I don't, I'm like, oh, is the fact like, do people get freaked out if they go, oh, write your screenplay in eight weeks. You don't have to write it in eight weeks. You can do whatever you want. Like once you sign up for it, you will get one lesson a week for eight weeks, but it's actually up to you how long you want to take to do them that like you, you know, you're grown up. <laughs> so if you want to take a couple weeks off in the middle of it, you can totally take a couple weeks off. You can do what you want. Um, but it's a really, really, um, great course and a great way to do it right now it's only for the eight week course it's 247 dollars i mean 200 i don't know like 250 bucks basically for the eight week course or you can pay in installments um the price probably will be going up in the not distant future so if you are interested i suggest getting in there once you're in there you get lifetime access you can have it forever and what that means is you can literally use it every time you want to write a screenplay which you know why not right um, because it would just like guide you through that process and help you write the best thing. So if you are like wanting to like go to the screenwriters lab and you're thinking, okay, I want to write another screenplay and I don't have a lot of time, jump in there and you'll just get guided through it and you will knock out a draft in eight weeks and you'll have something to uh, submit. All right, you guys. Hey, Tali, nice to see you. So nice to see so many of you here today. And thanks again. Have an awesome, awesome day.